Google has just revealed Android B at IO 2018 conference and has also surprised everyone by announcing public betas for 11 different devices. Although we still don't have a name for Android P, here's why we are really excited for it and why we think it's going to be awesome. This is Sandeep from Rev Atlas, let's get started. The most major and tangible improvements are probably the visual ones. You'll first notice the difference in the notification drawer and settings menu. Google is making a big move into gestures and it's making sense considering that Apple is doing the same with the iPhone X and several Android OEMs are trying out their own versions of the same, so official support would be helpful. Currently, it's an option that you can enable in the gestures menu under settings and it's likely that Google will keep it that way and won't really enforce it upon users at least until the next major upgrade. When you enable gestures, the recent apps key goes away and you're left with the return key and home button. The home button also doubles up as slider which is why the recent apps key goes away. A single tap on the home button will take you to the home screen while a long press will open Google Assistant. A swipe up will take you to the recent apps, while two quick swipe ups will bring up the app drawer or if you're on the home screen, a slower swipe up also works. Also a simple swipe and leave will help you switch between the most recent two apps while holding the slider all the way to one side will keep the recent app screen scrolling till the last or first apps. Speaking of which, the multitasking view is now horizontally laid out instead of vertical and you can swipe any of the app previews up to close it. The app drawer also has some changes, especially the two shortcuts that show you your most used actions. Like it or not, manufacturers are proceeding with notches on smartphones and Android P has support for it by default. Developers can simulate on-screen notches in three different fashions. One being your regular notch like you find on several devices such as the Huawei P20 Pro. The second being the dual notch which is likely to come soon considering makers such as ZTE are already showcasing concepts like the iceberg with dual notches. There's even an option for corner notch as some of you may have seen in leaks of the Mi Mix 2S smartphone. Although the Mi Mix 2S eventually didn't have a corner notch or a notch at all, other manufacturers may adopt this fashion to reduce bezels and offer a more unique look. Current smartphones with a notch and running even Android Oreo often have content getting covered up by the notch or portions being rendered inaccessible due to the notch being present and the OS not supporting the notch. Now with native support, it allows the content to be wrapped around the notch and thus embracing it. The volume control panel has now been redesigned and is a vertical island that appears to the right side of the smartphone display. This includes a quick toggle for ring, vibrate and silent as well as a slider for the media volume. You'll need to press the settings icon to access the sliders for alarm and ring volume. Considering that phones are getting bigger and bigger screens, this will allow you to easily change the audio settings without two hands, especially on phones such as the Pixel with volume buttons on the right side. There's also a prevent ringing mode which essentially acts as a shortcut to toggle the vibrate mode when you press the volume up and power keys together. There's a small feature that lets you choose whether you want to manually change the orientation of the screen when you rotate the phone even when you have disabled auto rotate. It isn't intrusive and appears in the bottom right corner. Quite a neat little addition really. Google also just announced Android Auto Wireless but is currently restricted to Nexus 6P, the 5X and 4 of the Pixel devices provided that they are running Android 8.0 or higher. Android P however will enable all that for devices running on it. Google is going big on AI and is not just using the term for the sake of marketing but actually making use of it to enhance the user experience. The AI brightness feature for example will remember your manual overriding of the brightness setting you use in a particular environment and choose to auto apply it in the next time that you are in such an environment. It uses AI and machine learning to also allocate more power to the apps that it knows you will be using and give less to others when it knows you won't be using it. This should improve battery life quite a bit and if Google has worked on it nearly as well as they have used machine learning and AI for their cameras then this should be quite substantial. There are also several other improvements and features expected to be rolled out in the future before the final release such as the digital wellness features. The shoes gesture that will automatically put the phone on DND mode when you flip the phone onto his face. A dashboard feature that will show you various statistics on how much time you've spent using apps and what you've done in that time with each app. An app timer that will restrict your app usage and grey out the icon when your usage reaches the preset limit. And finally a wind down mode that will turn your screen into grayscale to help you head off into bed. There are several more features that makes this a massive upgrade over Android Oreo but these are perhaps our favorite ones and Google may add several more by the time the final version comes out. Jumping from Android Oreo to Android P on the Pixel to XL felt insanely fast and I can already see a huge improvement not just in terms of speed but also in terms of stability. The developer preview is surprisingly stable for a beta build and hopefully things will remain the same all the way until the final release. 
But one thing is for sure, Google seems to be more confident about Android than ever before and now have a clear direction towards which they're focusing all their efforts. Also releasing Android P as a beta not just to their Pixel first and second generation devices, but also to phones such as the Sony Xperia XZ2, Oppo R15 Pro, Nokia 7 Plus, Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S, Vivo X21, Essential Phone, and even the yet to be announced OnePlus 6 is only a sign of things to come. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next one.